My name's Julia and I'm Chief Executive of the Royal College of Occupational Therapists and more importantly I'm an occupational therapist and very very proud of that. I'm here to welcome you to the Royal College and to encourage you to join and become part of our community but before I do that let me congratulate you on the excellent choice you have made to undertake training to become an occupational therapist. It's a wonderful profession and I can heartily recommend it. So why should you join the Royal College? Well, because about 33,000 occupational therapists and students have joined and you should be part of that community. We have about 73% of the registered occupational therapists across the UK within our membership. So come in the tent rather than stay outside. What else might you get if you join? Well, you will get a huge amount of support uh, from our uh, teams that are set up to support members, so professional practice, education and research, and our fantastic library. They will all help you on your student journey and enable you to face the future with confidence and develop your skills. At this time, the Royal College is working to deliver a new set of strategic intentions and you will be able to influence the positioning of the profession as we go forward. So I hope you will take the time to look at those as well. More than that, as a member, you will be able to join one of our local regional groups and that gives you the chance to network with occupational therapists locally to where you are, or one of our specialist sections, which enables you to develop your clinical expertise. We're a happy, thriving community. We want you with us. We need your help to sustain the profession as we move forward to grapple and grasp and enjoy the opportunities that all the next few years will give the profession. So please come and join us soon. Thank you. So introducing the Royal College. The Royal College is the only professional body in the UK for occupational therapists and it aims to set the standards of practice for education, support members and promote the profession and it aims to support you wherever you are under that umbrella term of occupational therapy. So whether you are an occupational therapy support worker, whether or not you are a student or potential student, a new graduate, a professional or a retired member, wherever you are in your career path, there are resources and different things that you can use through your membership to support you. I have a lot of students that tell me they've seen the green books of the Code of Ethics. Um, I had one student once tell me that it was the green bible of OT, which I quite liked because it is something that I've used quite a lot while studying and also now I'm qualified, it's something I refer to quite often. Um, so the difference between the two of these documents, so the Code of Ethics focuses on the person, so it focuses on setting the standards for what you need to work towards as an occupational therapist. It talks about different things in there, it also talks about social media. Social media is something that comes up and up and up again, and as a student, every time someone mentioned social media, I thought, yeah, yeah, I get it, whatever, and I didn't pay any attention to it. And then I came into this role, within a couple of weeks, I had an email from a student who was on placement. They'd gone home on a Friday night, um, they were in a, on placement in a mental health setting. So they'd gone home on Friday night, got really drunk over the weekend with their friends. Monday morning, they'd gone into placement and one of the service users named the bars that they'd been at and the people they'd been with. So actually, as much as the, set, the standards are there and the code of ethics are there to set the standards for what you are to work towards, they're there to protect you. So remembering things like putting your privacy settings on Facebook or not putting photos up, don't seem that important, but actually can have really big repercussions on your practice and what happens to you. Um, so that kind of talks about the code of ethics. The professional standards, on the other hand, um, they're informed by legislation, policy and HCPC requirements. So they set the tone for occupational therapy services and are focused more on the workplace. So the standards include um, things like talking about the fact that service users should be at the center of your practice. Um, so both of these documents are very important, they should be used together, they are downloadable for free from the website. I like to start this one with an easy way and I like to start with keeping up with the trends. The idea that actually to start off with you don't have to jump straight into the journals, you can start off with something as simple as Twitter and social media and OT news. So these are great places to actually start to know what's happening and in the world of healthcare. CPD doesn't have to take days, it doesn't all have to be courses and going out and doing something for a day, actually it can be some little bit of learning that's taken you a few minutes and it's made that difference so it's really important um, and that's where social media is brilliant. On the other hand we've got OT news or um, as a student told me once that thing that comes through their door every month 
Um, essentially it is that thing that comes through your door, but it's got a lot of benefits to it. So within OT News, you've got lots of different resources. It's a monthly magazine that features news, policies, features, opinions, and the latest trends in occupational therapy. So if there is something that's happening in the world of healthcare, if there's a policy change or something that might affect occupational therapists, it will be covered in OT News. It will most likely be in there. Um, and also it's a great way as a student to start building up your say and your voice in the profession. You can submit an article to OT News. We do have a physical library set in London Bridge. Um, it's quite a nice area, um, but the physical library itself is the largest, or, so the largest, it's the national collection of occupational therapy literature. So it tends to have everything. If you're looking for something and you don't know about it, it's worth getting in contact with the library. So the library itself have a team of librarians that work Monday to Friday, nine till five, that do have a email address and a telephone line. So you, if you are getting stuck, they have something called the five minute rule. If you're getting stuck searching for articles, five minutes are up and you're getting a little bit stressed and getting worried, you can get in contact with them. That's what they're there for. They're able to help you things like if you're doing research, so actually around literature searching, exclusion and limiting criteria, if you need help with that, that's what they're there for. If you're looking for articles and you're getting stuck, your, your search terms or you're getting struggling with your key search terms, it's worth getting in contact with them because it might just be that there are some synonyms that they know of in that area that can help you. It might not. It might be that they know that there's not a lot of literature in that area, but they know of a, another area that you can look into that can broaden that search out for you. So they are worth getting into. Um, we also have in the library. Um, there are computers. There's free Wi-Fi. There's some quiet space that actually, if you do want to work away from university, you can. And we do have a great coffee machine. And then we have conference. Um, so conference is um, the only time where you'll get between one and a half or 2,000 occupational therapists in the same room. So this is the big one. Um, this is where you can go up to anyone. Conference has its own little world and it's its, its own little bubble um, of excitement and of occupational therapy. You can walk up to anyone, um, start talking to them about occupational therapy or your area of practice and everyone's quite willing to chat and talk about where they're working and actually start to build that network. You can attend sessions where people talk about their research, talk about their posters, um, you can go to the exhibition hall where you've got different things going on there um, and see different exhibitors, um, you can talk to the specialist sections there. Um, it's a really great place to start building up networking and talking to other people. Mm -hmm.